Hello world! In this video I will be walking through Wax, which is an open source audio synthesis environment that is based in the browser. So the first thing that you would do is go to this URL, and this is the starting screen. It should be the same if you're on a phone, or on a mobile device, or on a laptop, or whatever. And so then you would probably want to add some devices into the workspace. You can double click anywhere, or press N, and it will open up this autocomplete. Um, let's say I want to add a triangle wave, I type TRI, and hit enter, and there's your oscillator. Um, now you can see you can just hard code the value if you want to. I'm going to just um, add another times object so that I can connect this to here and multiply it by 0 0.1 so it's not too loud. Connect the output of times to the input of these speaker channel objects and click start audio to hear the output. All right, so um, you can see that in that case I had hard-coded the value that I'm multiplying by. Um, you can also take um, a signal and use that instead and connect the signal to signal into here and we should hear it modulated by this phaser. Okay. Um, one thing to note is that if there is a value inside of the inlet here, sorry, the text input here, that will override any signal that's also connected to the same parameter. So in this case, we have a phaser that's connected to signal in two, but we also have a hard-coded value here, which means that this will override the signal and the triangle wave would just be multiplied by 0 0.1. So if you want to use a signal, make sure that this is empty. Um, that's a really kind of simple hello world program, but there's a whole bunch of different devices that you can connect together um, to create algorithmic music. Um, now you can select multiple devices like that with just a click drag, and if you want, hit delete to delete them or press this delete button. Um, every object, if you press the I button, it will take you to that portion of the readme. So you see now I'm at the noise where I can read that it generates white noise. Um, and yep, you have to press start audio for audio to actually start. This menu can kind of be hidden like that with this little hamburger icon thing. Um, then over here there's a couple of buttons. This one's for saving state, so any objects that you've added, right, you can save the state. It will open up this little file prompt. You can save it to your machine as whatever you want to call it as a zip file. So um, test.zip. Now, if I load that back from my downloads, um, maybe that wasn't super clear because I had it on my uh, system already, but there you go, it just reloads back. And that'll include any audio files uh, that are loaded into some of these objects. So for example, the wave, um, let's see. Here's a file called break.wave that I've loaded into this wavetable object. And let's just run through that with a phaser at one hertz. So it kind of reads the wavetable and we should hear. Okay, so let's try saving that, like test audio. Um, just to verify, I'm going to refresh the page and load test audio back. Yep, so that's that's saving and loading state. All devices just kind of shows all the devices here with a little list. Start record is for recording your session, so whatever you're hearing in the speakers, it'll also record into a little wave file and when you're done, it'll you can press the same button to stop recording, and then save to your uh, your computer as a wave file. Um, here's some examples to get you started. So here's a frequency modulation one, and you'll see that there's a comment object that kind of goes with this. Um, this one looks a little goofy right now, but that's okay. Um, and that's just a little. If you're confused, if you get here and you don't know what to do, this just gives you some, this question mark button just gives you some information along with a link to the full documentation. 
which is just the readme file. Um, yeah, so maybe a couple other things to note. Um, every object that has a text input, so for example, if I go to this triangle wave again, you'll see that um, not only can you just hard code a number, but you can also do something where you write an expression in a live coding language called facet. And so if I say, I want this triangle wave to be a random integer between 110 and 440, then every time I press enter with my, um, with my cursor inside the text input, it will reevaluate what the frequency of the hurt of the sine wave uh, triangle wave is. And you can also ha um, automated. You can do this in an automated sense. You don't have to actually press enter. You can connect any signal to this regen input. So, for example, I'll use a phaser running at just one hertz. Connect it to regen. Every time that this phaser goes above 0 0.5 it will reevaluate this expression and resolve to a number and change the frequency of the oscillator. So um, yeah, and there's a whole bunch of different operations that you can use to evaluate to a single number. Um, this is just one of them. Another, just to uh, demonstrate a few examples, would be choose. And then it will pick one of those four hard-coded values. Yeah. Um, select multiple objects, delete. And another thing to mention is that there is a um, another way to use facet, which is this pattern object. And in the pat <clears throat> in the pattern object, there's this large text area where you can essentially live code a wavetable. Um, like it can be any size, so it could be one floating point number, it could be multiple seconds of audio. And what you do to initialize a facet pattern is underscore dot. And then you just chain methods, um, like there's a noise method, there's a whole bunch of methods and um, there's a link to the facet documentation. If you go here, and then go to pattern and find the documentation to facet here. Um, you can learn more about the syntax of how to uh, create facet patterns, but um, just to give an example of how you might use this, um, say you have a specific thing you want to do uh, that can't be done as easily with the other objects in this system. Um, um, just like a simple example might be, say you want a really specific, uh, I don't know, like noise burst thing that palindromes on itself and then echoes a couple times. So um, let's say like noise 1000 times ramp 101000 uh, palindrome echo 7. Okay, so now I'm going to just read through the buffer that was generated with a one hertz phaser connected to the phase argument here. And you can see that I can live code it. Yeah, um, so you can use this to generate audio buffers or like control rate buffers, um, you know, things that have specific numbers in them that you want. So it doesn't have to be like floats that are between negative one and one, for example. Like it could be something as simple as, um, like if you wanted to use it for MIDI data, for example, like say noise 16, scale 36, 80, key C major, M to F. So that will create a array of 16 floats that are in C major. And so when you read through that as um, with a phaser here and then connect it to say a triangle wave, we should hear a C major triangle wave come out of here. Yeah, so it's not just for audio rate synthesis. You can use it to do all sorts of 
um, interesting modifications of, you know, this is just a phaser going into a triangle wave, but it's sort of through this translation layer that can do a lot of interesting stuff. Um, another thing to note is that this system, um, since I'm on my laptop right now, it only has two speaker channels, but the output, the number of channels that you can output is dependent on the selected audio output device for your computer. So if you have connected, you know, like something like an Expert Sleepers ES9, which I have, and it has 16 output channels, then you can actually select more than two output channels and connect any signal to any output channel. Um, in this case, there are only two, and I, even if I press the up arrow, I'm not able to access more channels because this particular context only has two output channels. But um, in other words, you can have multi-channel output if multi-channel output is a possibility uh, with your connected, uh, selected audio output device. And so I've used this system to um, like live code my modular synthesizer with multiple channels of control voltage and um, I was even successful in running it on my phone. So I saved a patch that I developed on here, loaded it on my phone, and was able to basically use my phone to control a large modular synthesizer patch, which was pretty neat. Um, and it kind of also is a great way to save money. <laughs> if you want to generate certain thing but don't have the um, you know, money to drop on a specific thing, maybe you could build it in this and not have to spend any money beyond, um, you know, if you have the modules to get the signal out from your computer into CV. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting use cases, particularly with mobile, and um, maybe a last thing to mention is that you can also <laughs> grab microphone input. <laughs> um, the audio context starts when you add a microphone, as you can see there. Um, that's so that the microphone is added properly. I noticed that um, yeah, on some devices, particularly mobile devices, that was necessary. Um, and another thing to note about that, I mean, you can, you can, for example, add like a delay and do all sorts of interesting things with microphone input. Um, the only catch is that when you record, I've noticed on mobile devices, sometimes the recording just sounds kind of garbled. Um, I've tried my best, but I can't quite cover every single use case in every single um, device. So, you know, maybe one day it'll work better on mobile for recording with microphones. Um, seems to work fine with all the other devices, but um, yeah, you can grab from any of the microphones that are connected on your computer. So you can see I have a bunch here that I could pick from and then do anything with them. Um, and so what I was mentioning this for is that I, um, I've i had some fun times like taking this, um, loading up wax in my car on my phone and using my car speakers as a sort of like feedback system where um, my phone is generating stuff that's being sent out to the car speakers and then the car speakers are feeding back into the microphone input and if I have like a low a low frequency oscillation that's controlling the feedback intensity I can sort of get these really interesting um, you know slow weird feedbacky things to happen um, you could even do things like you know drive around and have your friend hold the phone out the window and play music with the wind that's modifying the microphone or just do all sorts of kind of mobile um, synthesis stuff. So yeah, that's a quick overview and uh, it's free, it's open source. And I built this with Rainbow, which is a programming environment within Maxim SP that allows you to sort of export your digital signal processing code outside of Max. And I found that it was really, really great. Uh, this is all web export, uh, web like targeting the web. And basically each of these devices, aside from the microphone one and the speakers one, these are kind of special ones I added. But most of the objects were built in Rainbow. And they, they run as audio worklets in the browser. And they run um, using WebAssembly. So basically they're really efficient and really fast. And I was able to get um, you know, pretty complex audio processes going without hitting any CPU constraints or anything, um, even on my phone and with like eight channels. So I've been very impressed with how efficient and fun this is, and I'm looking forward to continuing development. This is version 0.0.1. .0 so um, let's go. <laughs> um, you can hear my dog in the background. She agrees. Okay. Well, thanks y'all. Bye.